Hey guys, this is Austin. Is a $60 smartphone worth it? There are actually quite a few choices at this price point, and to kick things off, we've got the Alcatel Pixie 3. Get into the unboxing, and you'll find the phone itself, the power adapter, a pair of headphones, which while cheap are a nice inclusion, the micro USB cable, and the 1780 milliamp hour battery. Pop the back off the Pixie 3, and you can easily install the battery. This is also where you'll find the slots for the SIM, along with the micro SD card up to 32 gigs. Next up, we've got the Blue Advance 5.0. Get into the box and you'll see the phone up front along with the power adapter, USB cable, and the 1800 milliamp hour battery. The Advance immediately looks and feels nicer than the price tag would suggest, especially in this white finish. Pop the back off and you'll see the dual SIM slots, which is a nice plus, on top of the micro SD, which can handle up to a 64 gig card. Last but not least, we've got the ZTE Maven, which at first glance looks almost identical to the Pixie. Like the others, it comes with a micro USB cable, power adapter, and the removable rear cover. The battery isn't replaceable, but you can install a 32 gig micro SD and the SIM here. The real question is what's it like to use a $60 phone? Actually, not bad. All three have fairly similar specs with a quad core, fairly low powered CPU and Android 5.1. You'll notice the occasional bit of slowness compared to a flagship, but they're totally usable. Run a couple benchmarks such as Geekbench, and you'll see the Pixie and Maven pull out a small lead on the CPU side, where when you move over to graphics with 3 Mark, the Maven pulls out a fairly substantial lead. One of the most important things to make a phone feel quick is the storage performance, and inside the PC Mark storage bench, things are close enough to put all three phones right up there with $600 flagships just a few years ago. Even though the Blue Advance is the weakest on paper, you'd be hard pressed to notice the difference in real use. Most games like Badland run no problem. A big part of that has to do with the screens. Both the Pixie and Maven are sporting 4.5 inch displays with a resolution of 854 by 480. They're about exactly what you would expect at this price point. Neither get very bright and the contrast is poor. As IPS displays, color and viewing angles are passable, but neither are any better than tolerable. The Blue Advance is a surprising step up here. It has the same fairly low resolution, but on a larger 5 inch display that might not look impressive on paper, but it's really not bad. The color, and especially contrast, is a massive improvement over the others. It can't stand up to a new high-end display, but at this price point, there's absolutely nothing to complain about. That same praise also carries over to the design of the phone. While the Advance is a fair bit larger than the others, you're getting a phone that could easily pass as something that's far more expensive. Unlike the hard, cheap plastic on the Pixie and Maven, you get a soft touch fake leather finish on the blue. It's also quite a bit thinner than the others, which paired with the nicely tapered edges gives it a much nicer feel in the hand. All three do have fairly unimpressive rear firing speakers and pretty large bezels, but you'll find on-screen Android keys on the Advance compared to capacitive keys on the others. With all three running Android 5.1, the software side is pretty even. The Blue and Pixie both have very lightly skinned builds with minimal additions, where the Maven has seen larger changes including quite a lot of bloatware. The bigger issue is storage, where you'll find 8 gigs on the Maven, the Pixie and Advance only come with 4 gigabytes out of the box. A micro SD card is a good idea for all of these, but it's basically a necessity when you've only got 4 gigabytes to work with. It's a similar story when it comes to RAM. Where the Maven and Pixie have a full gigabyte, the Blue skimps a bit here with 768 megs of memory. This complicates things a bit. While the Maven is a better spec phone, the Advance looks and feels like a much more expensive device. Get to the cameras and it gets even more difficult to choose. You're looking at 5 megapixel cameras with an LED flash across the board, but here the Maven easily pulls out the win. It's far sharper than the others, it does a better job with color, and to top it off, it comes with a better camera app that reminds me a bit of the iOS app. It even gives you a promo to tweak the settings. It's the same story on the video side. The Advance has an advantage on paper with 1080p video, but again, I prefer the look of the 720p video on the Maven. One area where the blue scores an easy win is with the front facing camera. As a 2 megapixel shooter compared to VGA on the others, it looks a lot better, and that advantage is even more noticeable in video. For some reason, the Pixie and Maven record at a basically unusable 7 frames per second on the front facing camera, where the Advance at least keeps up a decent frame rate. In a vacuum, the Pixie is a totally usable phone for $60, but in this company, it's simply outclassed. The Maven consistently delivers a small performance advantage with more storage and a better rear camera, but the Advance looks and feels massively better, has a screen that's totally respectable, and a better selfie camera that makes it absolutely worth it. Cheap phones have come a long way. So which one would you go for? Let me know in the comments below and I will catch you in the next one.